Okay, in this video we're going to look at the current theory that explains how evolution occurs, which is evolution by means of natural selection proposed by Charles Darwin. So the history of life, as we look at the fossil record and so on, shows that the types of living things have changed throughout the history of life on Earth. There's been successions, there's been extinctions, different things were, were more common in different parts of the history of life on Earth. So one of the first theories that was ever proposed was by a scientist by the name of Lamarck. And he said, suggested that organisms adapted to their environment by what he called acquiring traits. Basically, the living things changed in their lifetime. So one of two things. Through dis disuse, organisms would lose parts, like the missing eyes of the blind cave fish or the digestive system of tapeworms, or moving towards perfection with use and need, the constant use of an organ led to the organ, organ to increase in size, like the muscles of a blacksmith or the large ears of the night flying bat. And then these acquired traits would then be transmitted on to the next generation. So Darwin comes along and he uh, was a naturalist. Um, which would be kind of like a biologist today. And he got a job on the HMS Beagle, which was this, this boat was going around the world, kind of mapping the coastlines of all the different continents. And in the process, he was able to see all of these different kinds of living things. And based on his observations and based on the work of some other people that were contemporaries of his, he proposed this idea of evolution by means of natural selection. And, you know, Lamarck's, you know, they just kind of looked at things and kind of looked at, okay, giraffes were always eating the leaves at the top of the tree, so giraffes had long necks because they were stretching to eat the leaves at the top of the tree. And then somehow that was passed on to the next generation. But no real scientific evidence to support. Darwin had lots and lots of evidence to support his ideas. So, in 1831, Darwin had just gotten out of school. He was 20, 22 years old and was invited to be the naturalist on this ship, the HMS Beagle. Uh, the main mission was to chart the South American coastline, but it traveled throughout the entire world pretty much. You can see the pathway of the Beagle, but one of the main things that had a big impact on Darwin's ideas were, was the time they spent on the Galapagos Islands, which is a, a group of islands about 500 miles off the coast of Ecuador and South America. And he saw things in the Galapagos that he didn't see on the mainland and didn't see anywhere else. So what he found was, you know, armadillos are native to the Americas, with most species found in South America. Um, so why were there extinct armadillos and living armadillos on the same continent? It didn't seem to make a lot of sense with, using Lamarck's ideas. The modern sloth and the giant sloth again look very similar. But then you have the unique species on the Galapagos. You have the Galapagos tortoises, the marine iguanas, uh, blue-footed boobies, the finches, and so on. So one of the things that Darwin spent a lot of his time looking at was these different birds he collected on the Galapagos Islands. And some of them look very, very different from one another. But we what he thought were different kinds of birds were actually all different kinds of finches, the same type of bird. In total, he found 14 species of finches on the Galapagos Islands. And that was interesting because there was only one kind of finch on the mainland. So again, typically organisms arrive from the mainland out to the islands, and you typically aren't going to find more species on an island than you would on the mainland. But that's not what Darwin found. So we began to ask this question, how did you, one species become so many different species on these islands? So we had this idea that there were these ancestral species, and then the descendant species as you went up the tree of life. And so based on that, we have Darwin's idea about how he got all these different species, and it was related to the food sources that were available on different parts of the different islands. And so we had some that were seed eaters, some that were flower eaters, and some that were insect eaters. And there was even one that used a tool. And so there was a lot of variety there. 
So today we would call this adaptive radiation where one species spreads into so many different species in a relatively short evolutionary period of time. So the main thing that Darwin noticed about the differences other than some color differences were the beaks. And their beaks were adapted to what they ate. So its conclusion, small population of the original South American finches landed on the island. Different parts of the island had different foods available. The individuals that were best at getting the food had certain variations in their beak that became more common in those populations and eventually led to the generation of these 14 different species of finches. We also looked at the different tortoises on the different islands in the Galapagos, and we saw some, some variation among those tortoises, again, based on food. We saw different structures of their shell. Uh, we also looked at artificial selection, where humans were selecting certain traits. You know, we see the ancestors of many of the food species that we eat today, like corn and broccoli, they were very different from what we see today because we've selected specific traits. So you see the same things with domestic animals as well. Selective breeding, we pick the traits that are the most desirable. We breed only those organisms and we get all the different breeds of dogs and cats and other domestic plants and animals. So Darwin also paved the way for others, but also used information from those around him, his, his contemporaries. One of the people that influences Darwin was a, actually a, an economist by the name of Thomas Malthus. And he published this essay on the principles of population, which basically had to do with supply and demand. Um, and that led to Darwin's idea of uh, survival of the fittest. Competition creates struggle for survival. Population growth exceeds food supply. Only those that can, that are best at getting food are going to survive and reproduce in the next generation. Uh, at the time, most people, including most scientists, believed that the Earth was much younger than it actually was until Linnell published his book, Principles of Geology that suggested that the Earth was much older than it is today, which allows enough time for evolution and natural selection to create all the variability of life that Darwin saw on his travels around the world. But even so, Darwin knew that his ideas were probably going to be met with some resistance. In fact, a lot of resistance. And so he returned to England in 1836 he wrote some papers describing his collections and observations. Uh, one of the things he talked about was the different kinds of barnacles. Um, and he made a draft of his theory of species formation in 1844. Um, and he told his wife to publish it after he was dead. But then some things changed. One of the things that was important, 1858, Darwin got a letter from his friend. Uh, Alfred Wallace was working in the West Indies and written a short paper that basically looked a lot like Darwin's ideas of evolution by means of natural selection. So this was kind of going to force Darwin's hand. If he wanted to get credit for his work, he was going to have to publish his ideas. And so he wrote this book, The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. And this book has been published and republished many, many times. And other than the Bible, it is probably the most widely published, most widely read book in the history of man. We published this book November 24th, 1859. So here's the ideas he presented. Natural selection was the mechanism for evolution. Variation has to exist in populations. There's overproduction of offspring. More individuals are produced than can survive in a given environment. That creates competition for food, for mates, for nesting sites, 
escaping predators, all of those things. This creates differential survival. Successful traits, we call those adaptations, things that are, make them better able to survive and reproduce in a given environment. Which leads to differential reproduction, so those adaptations become more common in the population. The population then changes its allele frequency to match what's going on with this differential survival and reproduction. So let's look at the two ideas. Again, giraffes are reaching higher vegetation. They stretch their necks, transmit those acquired traits onto the offspring. Darwin, giraffes are born with long necks because their DNA tells them to have long necks. They've inherited that trait. So Darwin is correct. Lamarck, not so.